This episode is going to be airing on Wednesday instead of Friday because Friday is Christmas and uh, we just thought in case there's anything out of what we're cooking today you might like to you know reproduce on Christmas Day it just sort of gives you a chance to watch and get your uh, supplies and try and do it at home as well and even our New Year uh, special we'll be doing it a couple of days before the first so New Year lunch if you want to make something special catch our episode all the religious groups in the world, I think the Christians are brilliant. I mean, look at the way they've planned their festivals. They have all these other things happening throughout the year, but the really big one, the bada boom, so to say, is seven days before the year ends, Christmas, bada din. And uh, the way it's planned, it's like if you've had a bad year, you can make up by having a good Christmas and everything's all right and if you had a good year then it just culminates in that uh, celebration and Christmas is such fun it's it's universal across the world it's all about giving and sharing and generosity and faith and most importantly it's about hope that there is a new tomorrow I mean if you remember that Christmas hymn and man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. So we've had a trying year and we are going to celebrate Christmas and we're going to give and we're going to share and we're going to believe that there is a new tomorrow, there is a better hope for tomorrow. Amit and I planned that we would sort of continue the festive spirit and uh, I'm going to cook some stuff, fun stuff. Uh, it's not the usual Christmas fair, so there's going to be no roast turkey and no plum cake and stuff like that. Um, but we are doing things like chicken wings and we're doing a salad with it and uh, we're doing a couple of dips really interesting dips and we're doing bread pudding which is simple to make and it's as it can be as rich and as delicious as a Christmas cake and you can even flambe it if you want you know if you want to go that extra step and pour some brandy on it and light it up to make your evening more special so that's what we're doing today what I'm really missing about this Christmas is Auntie Anne my friend, my neighbor from Bangalore and uh, she is a really special lady and with her uh, the Christmas goodies never ran out and she would make sure that my house was equally full of those Christmas goodies so whether it was kalkals or cake or those uh, star shaped kind of crunchy things she would sort of you know give us like plates full of it and we would be chomping away the whole day and enjoying, you know, going to the uh, fairs with Claire, her daughter, my classmate. And uh, I'm really missing that. So Auntie Anne, this one's for you. We're doing chicken wings as uh, the main uh, savory thing. And uh, we're going to do it very simply. Just marinate it in a little ginger garlic paste. Uh, barely a teaspoonful because I don't want to overpower it and uh, a little salt, a little Worcester and uh, then we're going to sort of uh, coat it in the breadcrumbs and fry it and uh, it's going to be one really uh, sinful finger food that you can eat while watching TV. To make that chicken a little more special we're going to do a couple of dips. Uh, one is a yogurt dip uh, as Amit loves saying homemade dahi and uh, the other one is going to be a uh, tomato salsa nice and spicy so the yogurt dip is going to have a little garlic and uh, a little mustard and i'm going to be hanging this first so i'll put, put it in uh, this napkin tie it up and hang it so that the water drains out and then it's nice and thick and creamy and then i'll mix a little garlic and mustard and salt and pepper in that will be the, the yogurt dip 
and the tomatoes I'm going to <coughs> blanch them, peel them, chop them and mix them with some green chilies. It's really easy to make tomato cold salsa. Mix them with some green chilies and lemon and a little onion and of course a little tomato sauce and Tabasco. So that's going to be my tomato salsa and that's going to be my yogurt dip to make those chicken wings taste even more yummy. To ease the conscience there's going to be salad, lots of lettuce and we're going to uh, combine that with some grapes and an apple and one cucumber. And actually I prefer uh, not to use a dressing because the dips are there so you can you know dip your salad in the uh, yogurt or the salsa and eat it and the other thing is everything else is so you know spicy and salty and stuff like that so the salad really gives you a little uh, rest from uh, all the other flavors that are going into your mouth and of course because it's Christmas you cannot not have dessert so we are doing bread pudding now I first met bread pudding at the age of 12 when I went to Lawrence School Lovedale and uh, it was a dessert that was dished up pretty regularly over there so I have a lot of nostalgia connected to bread pudding and uh, but I never really made it till I watched this TV series called Pie in the Sky which was about this really fat cop, fatter than Amit and uh, he's uh, retired and he's running a restaurant so it's all about murder mysteries and food and really amazing series and he did an episode on bread pudding and that's when uh, I really got inspired and uh, I do follow a little bit of his recipes so I'm going to tell you that secret today and I'm sure you're going to love it and you're going to do it as well so basically what is going into it is bread and butter and eggs, uh, not so many, I'll just be using a couple of them, and some milk, and of course the raisins and cashew, and almonds, and there's sugar, and there's vanilla. This is a really yummy vanilla. Uh, it's a little expensive, but uh, worth every drop, believe me. And in case you're wondering what these peels are doing, uh, these were juiced up and now they're going to get marmaladed. And I'm going to use that marmalade in the bread pudding. So first we make a marmalade out of this, which is very easy. You just need to whir uh, it in the mixy, put some sugar, boil it, add a little lemon, and that's it, that's done. So let's get on with cooking. Up now here, the angel sings. A new king was born today And man will live forevermore Because of Christmas Day The first thing I'm going to do in this whole process is I'm going to hang the curd because it'll take at least 2-3 hours for the water to sort of seep out so I have a nice clean napkin here, I have a strainer and I have a little matka kind of thing. So I will spoon my dahi onto this. It really is nice dahi. Homemade. And I created this sculpture all on my own. First by, I think, heating milk and adding red chilies with the uh, stalk to it and of course that first lot of yogurt was unusable but uh, the culture, the jamun that came out of that eventually sort of uh, made my thai. So now that that is done I will tie up these ends. This will hang and it drip and uh, I'm going to try and catch the water so that I can use it for cooking later on. It's always handy to have some hooks around in the kitchen. You never know what or who you need to hang. We are going to do the yogurt dip now. It's been uh, hanging there for almost four hours 
ideally if you can hang it like you know early morning let it hang for around 8 10 hours or so nothing like it but even this was fine see how nice it's become my sister's got a very french sounding name for this i can't pronounce it so i should not say it so i'm gonna add some garlic to this i shall pound it up first and then put it and so that my pounding is easier, I'm going to chop it up. Um, this much of a pinch of salt. We can adjust the seasoning later. Some pepper. Not too much. Add some mustard. I don't have mustard. So I am falling back on good old Kashundi. I have to be careful about this because it tends to bloop out. That's enough. I just want a hint. You know those Christmas movies? I love the way they have that part where uh, there's like a whisper of the sleigh bells which sort of tells you that Santa has gone on his sleigh and he's giving gifts to some people. Some good people. Got a tablespoon of olive oil. Junior chef commands that we add some basil to this. So I will not doubt his instincts. So he will chop up some basil and add it. It's Christmas, right? Green is always welcome. And now just mix it. This is actually a very nice spread for your toast, for your breakfast in the morning or just as a snack or you could keep this dip ready and uh, you know have it with cucumbers and radish and carrots especially now in winter when all these vegetables are so so you know profusely available and they're so good there it's done just gonna take a taste of it mmm mmm very mayonnaise even though it's not mayonnaise and of course if you want it to taste like horseradish then bite a mooli chew it up put a spoonful of this in your mouth and you've got horseradish sauce at least you've got radish sauce There is a secret to my salsa and uh, that secret comes from the northeast part of India. So the tomato, I am going to be roasting it on the fire. And I should be doing the same thing to the green chilies as well. We chop some onion as fine as you can, like you would for an omelette, and into the bowl it goes. Next, these tomatoes you need to take the charred skin off, it has a nice smoky flavor. So into the bowl with this as well. And now the chilies. Chilies, of course, depending on how hot you like it, you can add it. Well, the salsa is nice and spicy, that's the way it should be. I'm going to add a couple of non-roasted chilies to give it a fresh taste. And to this I'm going to be adding salt. Let's start with kind of a teaspoon. A little sugar. Some nice balsamic. This my friend Sureka got me from Germany. It's come all the way from Germany. And it's 
Mmm, very nice. You can add regular vinegar also if you don't have balsamic. Little lemon juice. Again, we shall start with half a lemon. You don't want it too sour. I don't know how sour the tomato is. The tomatoes in this season are normally sweet rather than sour. And I'm going to add some tomato sauce. It's a very rude tomato sauce. And finally a little Tabasco to give it that zing. Oregano or oregano, however you pronounce it. Uh, you can use dhania patti also. That goes actually extremely well. And I should add a little pepper. Mix it. Mmm, the Tabasco. I can smell the Tabasco. And the salsa is ready. Take a taste. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Where's the chicken? Okay. This is now going to go and sit in the fridge. I know my cameraman wants a taste as well. Yummy, yummy. The salad is very simple. All we're going to do is just uh, tear up some lettuce. I don't cut lettuce because somebody told me that when you use a knife on lettuce, it tends to go bitter. So we're just going to tear them up. And in this one, since we're not adding a dressing, it doesn't matter if the leaves are a little wet. I'm going to chop an apple into it. Now once I add the apples, I'm going to squeeze a little lemon on them so that they don't oxidize and go black. Just half a lemon is more than enough. Then I'm going to add a little kira. Check for bitterness. Hmm, not bitter. Put that in there. Add a few grapes, just for fun. They look pretty. And toss it as it is. I am not adding any salt because then all the lettuce and all the stuff will wilt because they'll get dehydrated. I'm just going to keep it in the fridge. Slightly moist. So they'll stay crunchy. And don't forget we've got that wonderful salsa dip and the yogurt dip to embellish the salad. Okay, into the fridge it goes. When you're cooking chicken wings, um, I love wings. One thing you have to be really careful about is these little bits of uh, hair or feathers or whatever that might still be there. So just make sure you clean it nicely before you marinate them. Time to marinate the chicken. It's been cleaned. All the little hairy bits, feathery bits have been taken out. So I'm just going to add a little salt. Remember I said we're going to keep it light. A little pepper. The flavors are all basically going to come from the dips that we're making, the salsa. And, um, one teaspoon ginger garlic just to take away the meatiness and some booster. If you don't have Worcester, it doesn't matter. You can add maybe a quarter teaspoon of garam masala, though I would suggest not. 
Just leave it out. Salt and pepper is fine. I'm going to let this guy sit like this for around an hour or so. And then we shall dip it in egg, dredge it in the uh, crumbs and fry them. Come, they told me, ba rum ba pum pum a newborn king to see, ba rum ba pum pum I love that carol. Carol, Christmas song, whatever. Especially that part where he goes, And then he smiled at me, pa rum pa pum pum Me and my crumb. So we're ready to do the chicken. I'm going to start with one egg because I don't know how much the egg will go around. And I don't want to waste beaten eggs. Even though I'm sure the crows will be very happy. He's sitting over there watching while we cook. First time I'm working with this. Quite excited. Now, dip one chicken in there. If I should leave it a little more wet. Do and learn as they say. Let's try frying these first, see where we've gone wrong, and then maybe correct it. My oil's been heating. I'm going to put it on low. And then I'm going to slowly release. Slow fire, let it cook for, it says 10 minutes on each side, but I don't know, I have a feeling my crumbs will burn. Maybe the oil needed to be a little cooler, so the next slot should be good. So the chicken is done, it's been 10, 10 minutes on each side. I think the only thing I did wrong was uh, let the oil warm up too much, otherwise it's perfect. Of course, the proof is in the eating, so we shall check it out. But it's looking and smelling yummy. Is this stuff the KFC bears you? Don't waste your orange peels, especially the Pinu ones, because they're not so bitter and uh, they really make a nice jam. All you need to do is take out the pit. That's this white stuff from the inside and if a little bit stays it's alright because uh, that bitter taste is what one really loves in a marmalade. Please see my Santa duster. So this is all cleaned and now I'm just going to Pulse it, I don't want it too fine. So basically this is what it becomes. And now I will put this in a pan with some sugar and a little lemon juice and boil it. Um, sugar is like to taste. 
or whatever. Um, maybe uh, one is two half kind of a measure works. Uh, you just need to thicken it so that it spreads nicely on the bread. Mmm, smelling so good. One of the reasons I love winter is because of the oranges. Reduce the flame and let the sugar sort of melt gently. Bubble, bubble, boil. Whatever. Sorry, Shakespeare. So don't forget you have to keep stirring this otherwise the sugar will burn because we didn't add any water it's already thick and it's a nice consistency to sort of add in the pudding I'm going to add half a lime I don't want it too sour I don't want the custard to curdle in the pudding So this is done. I haven't thickened the marmalade too much because I don't want the sugar to start crystallizing. I need the spreadability to be easy. I'm just covering it and letting it cool till we actually need to use it in the pudding. Time to make the bread pudding. I'm going to preheat the oven at 200. Bake mark for... I'm putting it at 40 minutes so that I don't uh, need to reuse the timer and while that is heating what I'm going to do is uh, create a little caramel in the bowl that I'm going to be baking so I'm gonna put this in there let the butter melt and the sugar melt and meanwhile what I'm going to do is get all these nuts. I've soaked these so that they're easier to peel. I have some cranberries and some raisins which I'm going to chop. Just rough chop so you don't get big bits in your mouth. In case you're wondering about this band-aid, I burnt my finger while baking some bread. Cashew nut. So I think that's about enough. And these will get scattered on the bread. I'm going to remove the crusts of the bread so that I don't have any unnecessary don't throw these away you can <clears throat> dry them and make some nice breadcrumb and that's what my mother used to do oh, I'm gonna bash up these eggs just two should be enough add a little sugar Remember there's uh, that very sweet marmalade going in as well so you don't want this too sweet because then you'll have a really excessive sweet pudding. So if you're going to be adding say a cup and a half I think. Okay so 10 teaspoons. So you just bash this up. Now I will add up and I think that should be enough just a little bit cup and a quarter milk just need to make sure that the sugar is getting dissolved caramelized 
Can you see it? I hold it on the right. Just adds a little bit of interesting flavor to the uh, bread pudding. That's all. It's not necessary. You don't have to do that step. So what was I doing? Okay, this was dashed up. I'm going to add some vanilla to it before I forget. Make sure I get all that precious stuff off the spoon. Make sure you mix in the vanilla nicely. Okay, so that can sit there. Now I am going to butter my bread I don't need to butter the bottom because it's already got butter there then to add this see how nice and jammy it's become Again, no need to overdo it because you don't want anything overpowering. Layer number two. So this will go into the oven. And live there till the custard is set. I'm going to reduce the heat a bit to about 175 and uh, half an hour should do. Don't let me down. <laughs> Don't let me down. <laughs> Always sing to your food. It comes out better, believe me. Oh, look at that. Mmm. Smelling good. Looking good. There. I think I should let it cook a little more. Though it's beautifully done right now. Let me just give it a <coughs> toothpick test. Yep, it's come out clean. I'm still gonna put it back in for another five minutes while the oven is still hot. I'm gonna put the heat up. So it looks like my bread pudding is done. It's got a nice crust. We're gonna be serving this cold. So I'm not going to cut it into it right now. Just making sure that it's put through. Christmas dinner is ready. And it's not the traditional roast turkey or roast chicken or anything of that sort. It's very simple and it's finger food basically. But it's yummy stuff which you can like really enjoy. Um, especially as a two-sum romantic, light a candle, pour some wine and you've got fried chicken, you've got salad, you've got dips, you've got bread pudding 
And let me show you the bottom of my bread pudding. Remember the caramel I was talking about? Yeah. Can you see it? And of course, my wonderful adornment finally fell off. Let's taste the chicken. Chicken, chicken. Salsa. I'm gonna get some of this. Just taste this first. Hmm. Perfect. Slightly sour. It's got that yogurt tanginess. And the mustard is there underlying. Who needs dressing? Chicken's perfectly cooked. Chicken I'm gonna dip in the salsa. Mmm. Hot, crunchy, crispy. Mmm. Yummy. I don't think I need TV. That's really good. And wings lend themselves to this because they have that nice skin. So, and they are even better. Now to test the pudding. The proof of the pudding. Look at that. You can see the layers with the marmalade. I really wish you guys could smell this. Mm. A lot of people would say add some cinnamon, add some nutmeg. But you don't need anything because that yummy orange zest marmalade is doing it all. And it's nice and soft, not gooey, not mushy, the caramels at the bottom, buttery. Mmm! This is the best. Myth, you have to taste some. If you want, you can add a little brandy or rum to it, but it doesn't need it. It's great just the way it is. So, Merry Christmas from all of us at Slow Fire Chef. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. <laughs> and a Happy New Year. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Something, 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 something.